Welcome to this episode of Fireka and we are having a very 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 interesting guest today Dr Vyas Rajan who is a senior professor with the uh, Indian Space Research Organization Before we continue this uh, conversation we'll take a quick look at his brief profile Dr. Yagni Swami Sundara Rajan is a well-known scientist, technologist, administrator and an organization builder. Born on the 10th of April 1943, Dr. Vyas Rajan received his master's degree in physics from the University of Bombay in 1964. He joined the Physical Research Laboratory Ahmedabad as a research scholar to work with Dr. Vikram Sarabhai's team. Dr. Vyas Rajan played a very important role in the emergence of ISRO as a major space power. He has authored several books and is also the co-author of the popular and path-breaking book India 2020, A Vision for the New Millennium with Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. Dr. Rajan received various outstanding awards, noted among them is the Padma Shri in the year 2012. Thank you thank you for being with us I should tell our audience one important fact this show they are all seeing it through a satellite transmission today in india any satellite transmission whether it be in television or telephone or other data which are going through insat there is a hand of us in it you are the uh, one of the chief architect of uh, the uh, space program which had developed this uh, communication satellites you have played a very very major role in it and uh, you joined one of the organization today part of the uh, isro family prl physical research laboratory in ahmedabad way back in 1962 just about uh, a year before i was born actually to say so uh, how was it in those days see 1964 ahmedabad is i started for cosmic race there there was a unique man who was a director vikram sarabhai sarabhai sara vikram sarabhai so we will call as a vikram bhai that is a typical uh, uh, gujarati way of telling so he his dream was to reach the villages through the modern technology 600000 villages this dinned in our head even now if ask any time 600000 villages we wanted to reach them so how do you reach in those days those type of technologies were not even thought of even in america dishes were very big 97 feet as you have in rv 30 feet diameter is too big so we wanted a small one that also a chicken mesh so that if the bird shit on it 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 will go out that means is a challenge this doesn't have much gain today you have got a dth that came because of that that was the dream he worked with some of the great fellows thinkers in america nasa people to have it so to make that study that was application technology satellite some of you would be actually you would have been just uh, 12 years old uh, when the 1990 1975 we had aryabhatta on one side then this fellow came american satellite moved i was working with them also but before that to define our own satellite with this reaching all the villages that's first number two telephone connection all over india third meteorological things so what you mean to say that today the uh, robust communication system that we find in india largely indigenous i mean uh, in terms of network in terms of satellite uh, bandwidth transponders we have almost everything uh, indian made within the indian control all this were dreamt about 50 50 years ago and then there was a plan that we should reach there correct it is this uh, dream that has brought us uh, over yeah, it was dreamt around uh, 64 65 sarabhai started working on it that is why he pushed some of us and you were part of that dream i was i was a part of it so he gave us the thing therefore afterwards almost india had so many turmoils during those period but much of it will be forgotten because we were all in this doing it and thinking uh, that we will achieve after being in prl after the isro was formed 
few years later isro was formed and then you became part of the isro family what were if i were to ask you let's say for example three major work that you did in isro which you would class as three top contribution of yours to isro what would you class them as see very difficult but however i would say as a scientific secretary isro isro's great strength is system management doing systems review system engineering look at it holistically with the users with the industry and all for that professor davan made me scientific secretary isro that means i pervaded everything planning commission to that is a robust system in which i played a very important role so what today isro is yes, uh, the strength of a very well organized institution you have played a very important i played role. an important that role. would be your, one of your contribution what would you rate as second one second one in isro will be all concerning the remote sensing environment we people talk water bodies we talk in every one of it earth observation system which includes looking at cyclones i think but basically it is the ground everything which what you see those things and then putting them together not just the camera alone put it to the na- normal system it is called which is done by the survey every item soil survey is a is a art by itself you have to do it on the ground but how to merge them so that you can do it fast national natural resource management system in that i had you a very crucial uh, in nnrms you will see in the uh, international journal of remote sensing also the two volume series very, very have come out uh, what would you rate as your third uh, contribution from uh, isro i enjoyed it that's all i can say i enjoyed all my colleagues all my colleagues i helped them to do because my role after first 10 years has been to make others to do so in the 24 years of it another 14 years was spent in trying to do for others help the project whether it is dr kalam for the slv3 you are raw for his this thing each one i won't be a project director for any but still i do do it get it to the users get the things get it to the industry make industry so it is basically it is that i help my colleagues and that gives me that is why they love me even now very very important point see uh, if one looks at let's say the old pictures uh, i mean the famous picture of a satellite being carried from its building site to a launch pad in a bullock cart is a kind of iconic of the way isro used available resources to uh, do the best of uh, technology in those times from those times we have moved to a very modern era where now we have two launch pads we are thinking of uh, producing reusable launch vehicles we are thinking of doing deep space uh, research how do you feel that this 50 years isro has become a world class organization as a person who had grown up with isro and uh, you know come up to this uh, stage how, what is your feeling in this part of moment i am i am very happy because even when i was around there we knew that this is going to happen but however you can't spend too much money in the beginning therefore we had an area but which is a very ordinary one if you see from today in those days when we did is very extraordinary same thing with the slv3 then the pslv we immediately we jumped into it in between there was a intermediary phase that is world class even now yeah it is launching foreign ones etc i was deeply involved in the study phase and organizing and all similarly in the remote sensing uh, when i just left in the end one indian remote sensing satellite uh, it, uh, it it contains many things you can uh, see everything i don't want to talk about certain items which i also on which i worked quite a bit then the insat which you talked at the beginning that satellite we first bought to abroad that was a the plan then off because we had to pick a jump for giving the communication and other thing to the users subsequently they were all built in india subsequently so i, go, I saw that these things were there of course now they have the young people who are there kept more and more and more is great that's that's a very interesting point and then uh, we'll take a very small break we'll continue with this interesting conversation by the way you know that he was a co-author with uh, our uh, great dr apj abdul kalam we are going to talk about it after the break don't go away keep watching eureka Welcome back to Eureka and we are having a very very exciting conversation with uh, Dr Vyas Rajan who is a senior professor with Indian Space Research Organisation who has spent lot of his time with uh, ISRO and later establishing a world class institution called 
Typhac. We'll talk about all of those, but before that, we are going to talk about a very, very interesting thing, his association with Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. You have been a very close colleague of Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. In fact, you have the honor of writing a book, Vision 2020, along with Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. Can you tell us some interesting incident between you that took place? There are plenty because it started in 1965. 1965? 65. When I told about the sounding rockets and all that where we started, his job was the foreign given says he has to launch it. But to get them, I have to have some payload, etc., etc. So it is that which started. He used to come to Ahmedabad. Then later when he was defining, it went off. Then I, in between, I went off to USA. But I was in touch. But when I came back, there is a lot of work for the SLV board has started. So it was very intense. In fact, he tells very interestingly about me in the wings of fire. One can go and note it. It's a very small one, but it is a great certificate he gave me on that. So this part of it grew. Then he had to leave after success. One cannot be clinging on to it and then keep repeating. So he had to leave. 1982, he left. He went to DRDM. That is for him, focus was on big missiles, small ones and also the big one, Agni, Prithivi, I don't want to put all of the, all the names, five of them. So I, we used to be in very close touch, but not on professional matters, because that is DRDO, this is ISRO. So, no connection. To this thing. Personal friends. No, no, they used, personal friends. The, many things which he did in uh, ISRO was used. Those industries were used. Then later, 88, I left. Then it became much thicker, uh, in a sense, it already a built up one, because he had a lot of things to use technology for a lot of social needs. Of course, uh, doing communication, remote sensing, all these are useful, but still the spectrum is narrow. Can you do it for a boat for a fisherman? Can you use advanced composite for something else? Sugar technology, can you increase efficiency? Can you give leather technologies, a new ones, to robotics, to all that. That is what was TIFAC. I got into TIFAC, this thing, Technology, Information, Forecasting and Assessment Council. Technology, Information, Forecasting, Assessment, assessment, co assessment Council. Council. It's a big noun uh, adjective. Information on technology, for technology forecasting and technology assessment. Assessment means Forecasting can do, this is going to come, that is going to come, all that. But you have to assess what is... What will be the impact of that in... Uh, in in this cost effectiveness, already people have invested. You go and tell a new smart building is coming, you can't break your house. Yeah. So, these are the things come in the assessment. That becomes very real. In fact, for our vision 2020, uh, one I think, Indian Express or something, I described one line, saying that... It's a, Dreams rooted in reality. Dreams rooted, rooted in, in reality. reality. So, like this, we look ahead, but you have to look how you go. Very interesting point that you mentioned, like uh, how uh, Dr. Kalam Saab had this idea that uh, modern technology that we are absorbing for either, uh, let's say, DRDO or ISRO should not be confined only to this esoteric areas, but also seep and also uh, permeate to a larger society for solving a lot of problems of uh, society, which is the kind of vision, for example, uh, Saraba used to project. Uh, it's very interesting to see that a uh, lot of people from ISRO who had uh, groomed under, uh, let's say, Saraba's uh, ethos have this very strongly. What do you think about this uh, vision? Do you need it today in uh, 21st century? See, uh, I want to have a small clarification to it. It's not only ISRO's and DRDO's technology. Technology outside is so many. But the method of looking at technology and then using them for your end use, that is what ISRO and especially Professor Dhawan is the man who introduced the concept of end-to-end -end use. Okay. Uh -huh. You have to see what is the end. If you don't know what the marketplace is, then there is no use. So, say for example, a big antenna, 20-foot antenna with the tracking in a village won't work. So, similarly, there are many areas, for example, leather technology. It may not be from either DRDO and all. Mm -hmm. Fly ash utilization. It uh, uh, does it in civil engineering. In other words, it's world over. Our view was, see whatever is available in the world. Are we using it fully? 
some had come into India as technology transfer, license agreement and uh, these things, but many of them were stagnating. So, one of the unfortunate part of Indian system in the early years was they acquired, but they stagnated. Stagnated. Uh -huh. so, fortunately, in ISRO, suppose they remained at the SLV level or Aryabhat level, they would not have come. They keep on doing... There both. is a very interesting point, the point that you made about SLV. You have been keeping repeating it and I suppose that you and uh, Kalam have worked in that SLV uh, production together, right? And uh, very interestingly, now if you look at the uh, GSLV, or I'm sorry, not GSLV, the scramjets that are being, being planned, the scramjets are going to use the same SLV, sounding rockets for uh, the initial uh, launch. Very, very interesting that uh, the technology that... Uh, uh, you people have worked, maybe not useful today for, uh, you know, directly, but then it is useful in a different way. It's it's uh, it's very wonderful to uh, note yeah, that yeah, kind of yeah, yeah. What you say is right, partly we have to revisit, yeah. but not the same way. Same. This cramjet will be very, very different. different. See, we used the SLV's upper stage mm. for uh, for Apogee motor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the thing is, you look at the past, mm. but don't get stuck to get it. Get stuck there. Okay. Get stuck to it. Say, uh, there are a lot of things which are available even from our traditional things. Aloe vera, now people are out to because some of the uh, things were known. But you can't use it the same way. Same way. You have to use the most modern knowledge of science and technology. That is where we have to look abroad. abroad. The thing which are the developing, developed countries, that is America, Europe, Japan, and even Israel and many of them, if you see, they have continuously upgraded. Whereas in most of the civil sectors in India, we have been happy with importing and then laying there, both private sector and public sector. Unfortunately, it, that stagnation took place even in the military area. So very, these things, you have to continuously, it may be a material change. It may be so many things, little, little things, which changes. But then we need to do Which that. changes. Say, for example, car. Ambassador car was there, heavy. It is almost like a tank. But when you have the Maruti, etc., etc., those technologies are big. Actually, it is the steel plants. You do it in a roll like this, five to six kilometers of plate will come. So, these type of things one has to look for. One has to look for. We'll take that a is small what break we here. Doing. We'll take a very small break here. We'll continue this uh, very interesting and exciting uh, uh, conversation. We'll take a very small break. Don't go away. Keep watching Eureka. Welcome back to Eureka and we are having a very exciting conversation with uh, Dr. Y.S. Rajan who was with ISRO and also the founding chief executive of TIFAC. Sir, you are the founding chief executive of TIFAC. When it was formed, I think it was kind of a visionary uh, technology assessment, technology forecast and also plan what kind of technology we sh India should move forward, where we should invest, where we should uh, uh, you know look out for. That is the kind of area that uh, you looked at. You are the founder CEO. Looking back at the history of uh, TIFAC, which is now I think more than three decades, uh, what are in your opinion major achievement that has come out of uh, TIFAC? See, one very important thing, it's about 28 years ago, 88 we started, is that instead of looking at science, technology, industry, market, etc. separately, try to look at it together and look at a marketplace. What will be the short term markets? What will be the long term market? When I say market, it is not that how many number. It's not always possible. Some of them are felt needs, which you can satisfy. There are some unfelt needs, which you can try to give. Can you give an example of both felt need and unfelt need? See, for example, the greatest unfelt need was Apple. Apple, this thing, iPad, that is why, that what made Steve Jobs great. But there can be several other examples. That is, you people will require it, but you don't know how exactly uh, what it was. So, these type of things to be looking at them holistically. This is one. Number two, we had, then we have to make sure that the industries do. It's not enough to do national labs. ISRO is great, TR, DRDO is great, but they have created another set of clientele. But you do a, a thing for energy conservation, you do a better material technology, better alloy, better these things, better control system, better design of your leather product, better efficiency in 
uh, in sh sugar. These things come to a point where you have to make the industries to do. We put the industry first and make them to work with us. So this created a whole set of things, homegrown technologies. Then TIFAC had a lot of missions, sugar technology mission, fly ash mission, uh, so leather in the technology. fly ash, uh, I'm, I was told that uh, before the TIFAC was uh, formed and then you took a very uh, you know, serious step to ensure that this fly ash which was a major waste and uh, pollutant, uh, if, if that could be used and then uh, usage was something like about 3% uh, or so right, right, and today right. it's uh, something like about 85% or yeah, so. Yes, correct. Yeah, this is a very, very interesting point. Let us shift to a different uh, aspect of yours. You have been a technology man, you have been uh, forefront of ISRO, later established this TIFAC, but you are also a poet. You have written a uh, poetry book, right? Yes. In, uh, Several of them. How many of them? Seven in, in uh, Tamil which has been, uh, uh, I am happy that the things which are written on it in the front, what they call, they call in Tamil as Anindurai, decorative yeah, yeah, yeah. one. That one is written by Sahit Academy winners. Okay. Yeah. So, they respect me into that. I am, I am nowhere near them, but still, it's a beauty which has been inside me. Uh, one of it has been translated by, into, uh, by, a, by another person, another eminent man into English, okay. Blossoms of the Heart. In, in Tamil, you know, then English, many of my colleagues you should say, hey, Rajan, can you, to translate from one language to another is difficult, that too from Indian languages to English is difficult. I had a natural gift in English also, so I used to write. So those things are three books. So you have written more than uh, seven uh, poetry Seven books. plus three, ten That's books. It. Can you tell us a very small uh, part of your uh, poetry, say maybe English, because most of our audience perhaps would be able okay. to. Can you just mine, read Mine varies a whole set of them, from a tea to anything, something serious. Somebody will ask, what is the item? Sometimes I observe people. So many of them have come, some of them have been on Kalam, some of them have been little, little boys and girls also. One I am going to read, something very, it may be sound philosophical, but uh, not that, that bad of a philosophical thing. So, I will just see it. It's called symbiosis. 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 Many of you will say existence of the opposites. Uh, one simple example is crocodile, in which there will be some sparrows which will go and pick the teeth. They are very nice. Their relationship is symbiotic. Like this, there are many. Life is fully symbiosis. I learned from biology. So, but it is applied to several other things. So, I will read it out slowly. Normally, the poets read two times, but I do not do it. Civilized behavior is preserved by fear of law, violence and social boycott. Democracy is conserved by force of military, police and invisible state. You look at it every day in life, this is what, but otherwise we can't be safe. Freedom survives through tolerance of those who abuse freedom for their selfish ends. Sects, yes, C-C-T, yes, sects are saved by non-followers who stay out of all specific sects. People are saved from powerful ones due to eternal power struggles required for power. Mother Earth is saved from do-gooders because good and bad or in one great mix. One that's the reality that's, of life. I learned it, it from through science, biology, through physics, biology and all these things. A little bit of other spiritual matters, but if you look at life, this is the reality of life. That's, that's, that's a very interesting and unfortunately we don't have much time, but then I want a very, very important question to ask you. In addition to being in ISRO and later setting up this TIFAC and heading it, and uh, doing technology forecast and assessment in India, one of the earliest pioneers, I suppose, in uh, India in that sense. You also were involved in higher education. And uh, today, if you look at the uh, youth and higher education are one of the major concerns in this country. In your opinion, if somebody wants to ask you, what is the major problem with higher education today in India, what would you list them as? There I would say, this is actually a, what will look like a radical one, but uh, I have tested with many top people. I, some people I don't want to tell their name because they are too big to say I don't want to say it. 
uh, and I have put it down also in book. It comes in Penguin, okay. the way beyond the three hours. Because today, way I, beyond the three, the three hours. hours. Normally, R means reading, writing, and arithmetic. But there are also other versions. My version is rules, regulations, and road. Rules, regulations, regulations and road. Regulations and road. That is what is killing it. That is because we have not liberated education. So, you are saying liberated education. Liberated as we did for uh, industry. And I am not just doing a, a radical thought. America doesn't have these super bodies like UGC, AICT. All the 5,100 institutions, they are all degree giving institutions. Let them learn, but they have to tell what they can do. So, they have to survive. So, that will create a shakeout. So, that is very important. Otherwise, creativity is gone. You want one exam to test all the creativity of people? This is not what uh, Adhusosh Mukherjee, who made the Calcutta University or Rabindranath Tagore wanted. So, today, Jadavpur University, origins are from Sri Aurobindo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then, Trigunasin. All of them wanted the creativity. If you see the pre-independence India, we had so many of great scientists and artists. That is because they come from situations where they did not have one uniform rule. This one you do like this, you read like this, how many lectures, how many this ones. It may be all, all right when you are small. Higher yes, education so you need a much more… We uh, need higher education even for school education. Release them. Let there be several modules. The current bodies which are doing controlling, let them be elevated to the upper level, where let them give what is happening in the world. Let them give best practices. I don't believe in best practices, because whatever is relevant is what is important. <laughs> Whether writing a poetry in a Bengali or a Tamil is the best practice, you can't compare. You can't compare. So Same thing a, about technology. Yeah, that's a very interesting point and then maybe perhaps this is a note in which we need to end this uh, program, because for want of time, we don't have much time. There is a quite a lot of stuff that we can actually converse. But then I want to say lastly, Kalam Saab in his book mentions about him very specifically and says, people say Kalam Saab is the welder of people, brings people, put them together, create a team who achieve things. And he says, I learned this from Dr. Y.S. Rajan. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, being with us in this program. We are very delighted and we are honored by your presence here. Thank you for being in this show. Thank you for this opportunity. Keep watching Eureka. Next week, we will come up with another conversation which will be exciting, interesting and informative. Keep watching Eureka.